Hi everyone, this is Cheryl McQueen, guest designer with Del Bellos Designs. Today we are going to do a fun tutorial making a fairy in ornament. Our fairy in ornament will be made out of a paper house. There are many options for paper houses available. Today I'm going to be using the Tim Holtz Village Collection 2021. To find this collection, you can Google Tim Holtz Village Collection 2021 and find many sources to purchase the thinlets. Uh, the cutting pieces are made by Sizzix. Um, I have seen other paper house options online and there are templates on Etsy as well. I like this one because it stands a little under four inches tall. So I can kind of show you how tall this one is. Let's start by looking at the supplies we'll be using today. As I stated, I'm using the Tim Holtz Village Collection. This is made by Sizzix. You can use any paper house that you would like. I like this size again, as I said, because it's about the around the four inch size, which is good for ornaments. For the inks today, I'm going to be using Tim Holtz Distress Inks. The colors that we will be using today will include Salty Ocean, Peeled Paint, Mowed Lawn, Walnut Stain, and Aged Mahogany. I'll be using the Archive Ink from Ranger Black today for making my stamped images on the house. We will also be using the Lavinia stencil. This one is called Laurel. So we will use the Laurel on the rooftop for our inn. And then for the stamps today, we're going to use the Lavinia butterflies which is LAV 126. We're going to use the Orchard Grass, which is LAV 672. We're going to use the Fairy Foragers, which is LAV 498. And our last stamp that we'll use today will be the Hanging Lanterns which is LAV 360. I'll also be using watercolor paper today to make the house. I like this watercolor paper uh, because it's 140 pounds, uh, which will make the houses a lot sturdier. I also like the texture on the watercolor paper. It'll give the uh, look on the house of uh, just a little bit of um, texture on it. We're also going to go ahead and use other items today such as our Jelly Roll Clear Glitter Pen for our accents. I'll be using a marker. I like to use the purple for our little hanging lantern bells there. You can choose any color that you'd like to use. Um, I'll also be using a water mister bottle. We'll be using things like um, our brushes for making our background on our house. I'll also be using some of the little tiny daubers. We'll be using vellum paper to make the little windows um, on the inside so that uh, if we put a light inside there then we can show what the how the house will glow with the lights under it. We'll also be using a little piece of ribbon so that we can hang our ornament. Let's get started on our project. Here you can see I have got the pieces that we're going to use and making our ornament. I have already 
done one side, since two sides are identical, I went ahead and did this one up to save us just a little bit of time. I will not demonstrate cutting the pieces out since um, it's possible that you will be using a different brand of house. You can Google how to construct the Tim Holtz Village if you choose to, do, to use them. Um, so let's go ahead and start on decorating our background for our house. I'm going to move these little pieces out of the way here and we'll start with this one. I'll go ahead and set this one up here so you can kind of see what it looks like as we work on this one. Let's put this over here. Alright, so what we're going to start out with is using our Salty Ocean. We're just going to get a little of the ink on our brush and just start swirling it around to cover the surface. You actually don't want this to be real even. You like to have the lights and the darks and the different swirls showing up. This gives a little bit more of a realistic look to the piece. If it's just all one solid color, then it doesn't have much of a realistic look to it. So just put it on there and don't worry about getting it perfect. There we go. So now we're going to use a little bit of our peeled paint. With the peeled paint, we don't want it solid on there. We basically would just would like to have little splotches of it. Once again, this is something that just kind of adds a little interest and texture and makes it not look all the same. So I'm literally just kind of dabbing in a few places just to kind of get that peeled paint in a various little spots, not solid at all. Then we're going to take our mahogany, aged mahogany, and we're just going to, as you see on this one, just kind of got to go around the outer edges of it. So we'll just take a little bit of that and just kind of do a few little edges, outer edges. Don't forget to kind of go in the middle here because those sides, when you fold your, your little house over, you're going to want to have a little bit of that edge on there. So just a little bit to add some interest. And that's basically it. There's not much that goes on with putting the background. Again, you don't have to worry about it being exact or uh, solid because you want it to look a little bit more realistic. Now, I like to mist mine with a little bit of water because that way it kind of looks more fairyish to me with a little sparkle. So we're just going to kind of do a few little squirts and then just dab it up with a paper towel. I think that gives it the look of a little fairy light twinkle. All right. So now that we have got those pieces done, let's go ahead and do our roof. So with our roof, as you can see, we have just got a square piece here. It's actually got a nice little crease in the middle so that we'll fold that over. We're going to take our peeled paint and once again 
just going to take our little blending brush and just kind of blend it around. Again, you don't want it to be neat and perfect. You'd like for it to have a little bit of different colors and textures and variations so that it looks a little more realistic. Alright, and then we'll do exactly what we did before. We're going to take a little bit of the aged mahogany. And again, just kind of brush it a little bit around the edges. Just to give a little bit of interest on the edge. Alright. So this is now where we're going to go ahead and use our stencil. Um, as you can see here, it might be a little hard to tell, but I've got some little... I used the, the laurel leaf to put on the top of the roof. So we are going to go back to our peeled paint. And we're going to take our stencil and just basically just lay it on top. And again, we're not worried about getting anything solid. We actually just kind of like to give the little hint. Of the leaves. So let's see here. And I'll just kind of start. And again, I don't want it solid. I just want it... Just kind of on there to just give the impression of the leaves. To take a peek at it. Oh yeah, we're getting some good leaves there. Put a few more over on this side. Now we have the look of our leaves on the, the roof piece. Alright, so now we're ready to go ahead and start doing our stamping. So let's go back to our two pieces here that we have for the house. I'm going to move my stencil out of the way. We won't be needing that anymore. So we're going to start out by putting on our hanging lanterns. Now I like to go ahead and put a piece of paper down underneath. Grab some paper here so that I don't get my ink all over my work surface here. And we will take our stamp and just ink it up real good. And then just start adding some little hanging lanterns there. We can even have it going some across the window if we'd like. There's really no wrong way. Just kind of pick the pattern that you like the best. To our second piece. Do the exact same thing.
do a little second generation if we want some that are just a little bit lighter. We can even have some trail down a little bit further on the side if we'd like to. All right. So now let's go ahead and I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the door on to one side of the house so that we can have a good place to put our fairy. We want to line her up the right way. So I'm going to go ahead and move these off and we're going to go ahead and take the doorway, just this little piece here, and I'm going to go ahead and do that in walnut stain. Just put a little bit of ink on it. Very simple. And then I have a little door frame here that we're going to put on top of it. And I'm going to go ahead and do the door frame with the aged mahogany. Just a little slight different contrast there. Then we will just take our glue and go ahead and glue that little door frame on. I love these glues that you can have a very teeny tiny little line. Did it. All right, let's try again here. All right. And we're just going to place that right on top there so that we've got a nice, cute little door frame. That dries for just a second. We'll clean up our little mess we made here with the glue. All right. Then we're ready to go ahead and glue the door in place. We'll just glue that on. Then we'll be ready to put our fairy next to the door. Let that dry for just one second while we get our fairy stamp on. We're going to go ahead and use the fairy that was kind of looking down. Let our house dry there real quick. All right, now let's get our fairy in place. All stamped up there, inked up onto the stamp. Make sure we've got plenty on there. And then we're just going to kind of have her looking down at the door. good salt stamp. There we go. Oh, that looks good. Okay, and then I think so on the back side I also had another little fairy. I think we'll go ahead and put her on this one. My little lantern fairy out here. Do the same thing. We'll stamp her up really good. 
her on the back of the house. And then the last thing that we will want to do is stamp up our orchard grass and just kind of sprinkle that around the bottom of the house. Oops. We're using the mowed lawn to get our green in there. We'll do that on the other side as well. So now we have the walls of our house made. If we would like to then, you can either draw in with a marker for your window frames, or if you would rather, you can add more door window frames. That's the nice thing I like about the Tim Holtz set is that it does come with little different window frames that you can color as you like and add on there. I will finish those up and add those here in just a few minutes. So now we're ready to go ahead and construct our little fairy inn and put it together. While I have the camera off, I went ahead and finished putting on the little finishing touches with the window frames. And I went ahead and drew a little gold doorknob there on the door. For our roof, we wanted to be sure that we had um, something to hang our fairy ornament up with, fairy inn ornament, so I went ahead and poked a hole. I actually just used an old ice pick, but you can use anything that you can poke a hole in the middle, fed the ribbon through, and then just tied a little knot there on the end so that it would hold when we put the, the ornament together and hang it up. So now we're going to go ahead and part, start constructing our little inn and get it finished up. We have a few last final finishing touches on our fairy house. The first is, is that we're going to go ahead and just color in the little hanging lanterns. I like purple, so I'm just taking a little purple marker and coloring in the little drop down lanterns. And we'll do that on all sides of our house. So that we have just a little bit of color added on there. I'll finish those up later. I'll go ahead and show you then that we're going to just add a little bit of sparkle with our Jelly Roll Clear Glitter Pen. I like this pen a lot. I use it on a lot of my touches. And I think what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and like just kind of add a little touches around the, the bells, put a little glitter there on the little balls at the end of the fairy fairy lanterns. And then I've always liked to add just a little sparkle to my fairy. I think fairies should have some sparkle. So I'm going to sparkle up her hair and her wings.
just add that little sparkle and then of course her little lantern needs to sparkle as well I don't know if you can catch uh, maybe we can catch a little bit of the glimmer that we get by doing that there we go and then of course our fairy on the front we'll need to do her as well sparkle up her hair and her wings there we go so that she glitters and sparkles some as well um, we will go back in and finish up the purple here in just a few minutes off camera so we don't take too much time um, then as I told you before with the vellum windows we basically will just take a couple of pieces of vellum and I like to do a double thickness just fold it in half and then we'll just take a little bit of tape and then slide it up inside and then just stick it down. It might be a little easier to actually put your vellum windows in um, before you construct it. That way you don't have to worry about getting your fingers way up inside. And that's the little final finishing touches to our little fairy house. So now we have put our little fairy house together. I did not show you the instructions on how to do that because you may have a different house. You can always Google uh, how to construct the Tim Holtz Village Collection. So now our final touch that we're going to put on is our little fairy inn sign. I'm going to go ahead and take a little bit of our blue that we used, the salty ocean, in our basic part of our house and I'm just going to kind of Oops, put a little bit, that was the wrong color, here we go. A little bit of the blue onto our sign. And a little bit of the mahogany just around the edges a little bit. To bring out the colors in both of them. All right, then I'm going to take my little sign and just fold it over so that it's kind of a little triangle because we want it to sit straight on our roof. So I'm going to take my little sign. Let me go ahead and crease it a little bit better there. And we're just going to glue that little flap. over and that way it's going to make our little triangle here. Hold that for just a second to get it to the glue to stick. All right and then we've got our little sign. I'm going to go ahead and trim just this little corner off here so it doesn't stick out on the back side. And then we are ready to go ahead and put the little sign on the roof. And there we go. We've got our little fairy in. We've got our fairy looking at the door there. And our little fairy on the back side of it and our butterfly on the side wall. So now we have our cute little fairy ornament and you can see that we can hang it up 
or if you'd like to, you can stand it up and set it. You can't see it very well like that, but um, you can sand it up. You can put a little tea light under the edge. And when you put the little tea light in, then you can kind of see the glow there. And actually, one of the things I didn't do was put the vellum in this one. So let me show you the one that I did put the vellum. It really does a nice, soft little glow when you put the light in, in the windows. So I will go back in later and go ahead and put my vellum in so that I've got the same thing on both of my little fairy cottages. I hope that you have enjoyed watching today's video tutorial. Be sure to check out, check out the supply list that are um, is at the beginning of this video. It has the links for you can buy the items for making the fairy in ornament on the Del Bellos Designs website. Have a great day.